while we're on the advice subject, we should go into our one of our favorite segments on the podcast. Ooh. This is Dear Vinny. We thought oh, yeah. we thought it would be a good idea because um, we obviously everybody knows about Dear Abby and, and all those types of things. But I said we have a resident three hundred and fifty pound monster who has a lot of life experience, including being, being a fighter and all kinds of things. So um, this seems like the perfect opportunity for somebody who should provide life advice for relationship advice, whatever people need. Um, you know, and we tried the segment last week and it was shockingly insightful. So, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to, we're going to, no we're going to do a, a section of dear Vinny. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you that. And, uh, Amron, we'll start with you. Okay. And, uh, what the, now this is, these are real people. I've never these seen These are these. real people yep. who have submitted these for Vinny and, okay. um, from our audience. So, cool. so right. let's, let's, uh, who's this from? <laughs> Uh, Dawson from Yukon, Canada. Hey, all right. Canadian. Hey, Vinny. I've had many close friends in my life, and time after time, they hurt me emotionally and eventually break up with me. What am I doing wrong here? Am I the problem, or am I just picking the wrong friends? How can I find the right ones? Hmm. There's a lot of context missing from that, I feel. Yeah. (laughs) Friends, right? Not boyfriends or girlfriends. Friends. You're allowing yourself to be hurt. That's the first thing. Because your friends shouldn't be able to hurt you that way. Mm. This, that's why I asked if it was friends or girlfriends or boyfriends. Mm. We allow ourselves to be vulnerable to a point where we get emotionally hurt by people we are super intimate with, which should be our partners or people that we're being intimate with. So if your friends continually hurt you, you have the wrong type of relationship that they are not reciprocating. I'd be willing to bet those people don't even know they're hurting this person the way they are because mm. hmm. if if i don't know about you guys but the only person that can really hurt me is my wife because mm. that's who i'm intimate with yeah now if it, it could be a mix of both like you could be picking shitty friends so i don't want to say it's all on this person mm-hmm. but with my friends specifically it, they only hurt me as, mu- as much as i allow them to hurt me mm-hmm. even my best friends for life i don't they can say something shitty to me and fight with me and I don't go cry in my car about it. I'm like, oh, well, fucking Eric's being a dick today. (laughs) Check in tomorrow. So I think definitely there's wrong expectations on what a friend is. The only additional thing there is that there's the additional uh, um, detail of, and then they eventually break break up, up, which that's an interesting- That's why I got confused. Well, yes. And that's it. Is that a red flag? Like friends breaking up? I mean, obviously friends come and go. Yes, but, you but can, usually it's not official. Right. You know what I mean? Like usually, yes. usually it's just like, oh, I haven't talked to so and so in a long Their time. Their expecta- Dawson's expectation is incorrect for friendship. That sounds Maybe. like intimate relationships. But I wonder if these, if 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 he's saying um, she, oh, uh, Dawson. I, well, it doesn't matter. Um, if they are saying that uh, uh, break up with me, is this a consistent thing that's happening time and time again? Right, I don't know. Yeah, because like that would be interesting, and that might be, I don't know. Would that be indicative of like a weird sort of setup from the beginning? Expectations. Like, yeah, I guess that's it's there. all expectations. Yeah, Relationships yeah. are expectations. Yeah. Period. Has anybody ever had a friend break up with them in that way? Like, be I've like, had a friend hey, be like, "Hey, this we're is not going to be friends anymore." Yeah, I've had really. A, I've had a friend be like, "Hey, like I was going to come to this, but I'm not because of X, Y, Z," and they gave me this whole diatribe, and I was like, "I'm not fucking you. I don't care." But that's that's like get the fuck out of here. It, but is that different? Is that somebody saying like, "Hey, we can't be friends anymore"? It, to a point, because after that weird shit, I was like, uh, "We don't need to hang out." <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So, but that, that's why I asked you. The very first yeah. question was, "Are we talking about boyfriends and girlfriends?" Or are we? Mm, yeah, right. That's so. Yeah, Dawson, your expectations are completely incorrect. Yeah. Friends are there to fill gaps in your emotional needs, not to be your bedrock. Mm. Your bedrocks for your wife, your partner, your husband, them, her, she, whatever. That's where that comes from. Mm. I like that. Some people it comes from faith. Some people it comes from relationships. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that, yeah, it's a wrong expectation. You ever had a friend break up with you, like intentionally, like specifically? I feel like, oh yeah, in uh, in ninth grade, it really, was, it was school marching band, and um, <laughs> right, and so the context was that <clears throat> my friend confided in me that he liked this girl. Uh, let's call her Sam, and uh, and it was the championship. Um, marching band like uh, yeah, final yeah. round thing right and uh, we had a coach bus and uh, for whatever reason I don't remember but like I sat next to her on the bus and then he's like 
I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> like essentially, <laughs> Jeez. Ouch. yeah. Super and you're petty. what, fourteen? Yeah, ninth yeah. grade. Yeah. Ninth grade. By the way, yeah. last thing I'll say to Dawson is. If your friends are breaking up with you, they were never really your friends. That was a totally different kind of relationship. Seems like an odd thing to happen. Yeah, I don't, th- I, I don't think I've ever had. I've never had a person say like, "Oh, we're we can't be friends anymore." Right? Like right. specifically. I wonder. I wonder <laughs> if Dawson could write back and explain it more. Yeah. Because this sounds like relationships, not just friendships. Mm, interesting. Right. Big yeah. fucking difference. Does that ever happen to you? No. I mean, I think the closest thing I've had is there was a. Um, a musician that I was working with who is uh, from Japan and without getting into the details, some weirdness happened with the the business side of things mm. with the artist that we were both playing for. Oh, gotcha. And so she left the band, but by extension, cut off contact with everybody else that was associated oh, with that group, which interesting. Uh, Dylan, you lived in Japan. Maybe you can, I know you're not on mic, but you might be able to comment on that, which is that is a thing that happens culturally in in Japan. Really, wow. Yeah. Dylan's saying yes, it is. That's yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. So just like total like cut off of communication and being like, okay, I'm just gonna end this. Yeah. Here. Whereas yeah. like if huh. you and I were playing, let's say we're backing up uh, an artist, mm-hmm. and for whatever reason you get fed up and you quit the band, like you and I can still be buddies. Right. right. Yeah. Still exactly. Friends, but okay. Yeah. Huh. Wow. That's so, fascinating. Yeah. Why? Why such like to an extreme like like you're it's it's the artist that's in question that you're yeah well, I don't know. we're still yeah a lot of you know? there, in japan there's there's a big emphasis on the group like the community rather than the individual oh. so the group is more important to you and that's on a micro scale like your family protecting mm. your family's name and reputation um so that's where some of that comes hmm. from yeah. like you don't want to be associated with sure. any, any bad stuff mm. but you know it's it extends countrywide yeah. as well wow that's right so. thing. huh well wow, that's really interesting yeah. um uh we have uh we have one more dear vinnie i think you have it let's do it um, indeed that that's yeah, that's that. uh jake's thoughts <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is from andrew in california dear vinnie how do you judge the quality of a good piece of media like movies books etc oh oh yeah that's tough because we all get sucked into Rotten Tomatoes scores and IMDb scores and yeah. audience scores. I try to not judge books by its cover, but then I see something on a Netflix screen that their graphic is better than the next one. Mm. So I guess if they're asking how I judge it, are we talking pre-watching or post-watching or during? It's like you judge Netflix by its autoplay preview. Well, I mean, give, 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 give yeah, us to us both, like pre and post. I wait, wait. Let, let's phrase this in a different way because this is particularly useful for Sean and I. How do you decide what YouTube videos to watch? Brilliant. There's a lot to do with not just the what the opening screen looks like, but what it's called. Because if you can't tell me what I'm about to watch, I ain't clicking to find out. How much... Like, how specific do you want that to be? Like, do you want to essentially know the entire premise of the video before you click on it? Not the entire premise, but I want to know how it starts at least. So if if it's like, why the Model X is a terrible car? I don't give a fuck about that because that just sounds like you've already told me what you you think of it. If it was if it was my thoughtful review of a Model X, I'm into it. I'll check it out. That's fascinating because mm. I feel like the data suggests the opposite. And it might, definitely. Because like uh, so often what we see is, um, and and actually I learned this from uh, my buddy Daniel Thrasher, who's uh, really great. Killing um, it. Yeah, un- unbelievable creator. Um, and he had, he was doing this thing where he would tell, he would set up the joke of the video with the title, but the punchline would be the text in the thumbnail. So it's like you, you or, or at least like, <sighs> how the question proposed in the title was answered would be in the thumbnail. So essentially you were, you already knew what the premise of the video was, but you would click on it anyways, because you wanted to see how it played out. Yeah. So, so by that logic, Mm -hmm. you could say that somebody saying why the model X is a terrible car would actually get a lot more clicks because you'd you'd be doing two things. You'd be getting clicks from people who are like, yeah, the Model X is a terrible car and I want to be validated in my opinions. Mm -hmm. And then you have people who are like, fuck you, the Model X is amazing and I just want to get angry and see why this guy's wrong. Mm -hmm. Totally. And so like you get those two things, but you already know what the premise of the video is. Mm -hmm. You're just like finding out how it plays out. Yeah. It's the whole idea of anti-clickbait. 
Yeah, where basically. You, you give the answer in the video, but what's what's interesting isn't the answer, but the how you got there. Mm-hmm. The yeah. journey. Like, 100%. That yeah. sparks your Do you uh, feel like that curiosity. translates to movies and stuff? Like, do you like that? Uh, what do you, Like, what type of trailer will what make you want to watch a movie versus make you want to not? So, just... I guess I'm the anti clickbait, but I'm actually the anti clickbait guy. Like, whereas when I look at movies or I, I, I try to look at who's in it, what's the most unique thing about it, what's the premise of the plot line. I've noticed like Netflix movies that they're making, they are literally dog shit. They're not just kind of bad, they're actually poor productions, shitty fucking stuff. The writing's dog shit. Yeah. Day Shift with Jamie Foxx? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Like I haven't it, seen it. it, it's I haven't, I haven't so seen it. bad. Really? Dude. The contractor with Chris Pine, like these are awful fucking movies. <laughs> so I, I think one of the biggest. So I'll answer the question right now. If it was made specifically for Netflix, Amazon, I have a massive red flag. Really? Because okay. I truly believe they are doling those fucking movies out like a drug dealer just to give people their fixes. Right. Okay. If it is a, if it's from a, a big production company they try to do a theatrical release they try to do the press fucking rundown i will give that a shot any day of the week before some bullshit made for amazon prime what about something like the boys have you watched the boys yeah and it's it's but that's a series right so oh, so you're you series are movies totally are different, different. Oh. i'm talking just for mm. movies I see. if it's made for cable basically I gotcha. remember the term mm. straight to dvd yeah. yeah yeah that's what these fucking movies yeah, are yeah, they, kind they of just have out. everybody fucking tricked yeah, but these are like half-rate, bad writing, terrible acting, bullshit movies. <laughs> just going it's off. It's terrible. But the series, the series, they're investing way more into That's that true. shit. That's yeah. true. So yeah. the series, I will give. If we're talking just looking at series, I will look at highest-rated series, trending series, and see what is the hottest series. Because if somebody's willing to watch ten fucking hours of it and give it a good rating, yeah. way easier to yeah. decipher a rating on a series than a movie. You know what I find myself doing most of the time? I will ignore Rotten Tomatoes and I'll go straight to the Google users. So yeah. like, it says like Rotten Tomatoes, this score, but then it says X percent of Google users liked this movie or whatever okay. it is. Because to me, like the Rotten Tomatoes is all like the critics and like that's all bullshit because they have fucking stupid like you know, it's the stuff that's going to get nominated for Oscars yeah. and stuff like, like, which is all just like super pretentious bullshit. And like, but the Google users rating, that's real people. That's like right. real people who are like, this is great. Yeah. You know, and it's like pretty mm. rare. It's oftentimes I feel like you see the opposite. It's like the mm. Rotten Tomatoes score is bad. Usually the, the Google reviews are good. I, I've yeah. noticed that. Like, yep. yeah, mm. if critics didn't like it, chances are like people generally did. 